Hey everybody, Cindy from Ask Nurse Cindy. How are you? Trying to get my, my video going here on the gallbladder. So last week when I was waiting for Layla to get her a haircut, I talked to you, I did a video last week, and I promised you guys that I would do what I could to talk to you about the gallbladder this week. So that's, hi Susan, how are you? Thanks for joining. So as you guys hop on, let me know where you're from. And we're going to talk today about the gallbladder. And you're looking, let me see if I could get this turned around. Hello. So this is uh, my little anatomical model. I'm at work. Those of you that don't realize, uh, Ask Nurse Cindy's actually a real nurse. And I actually lecture on wound care. Hi, Kathy. Hi, everybody. As you're hopping on, hit the share button. This is an important video. I'm going to actually show you models. I'm going to show you some photo, not photos, but uh, medical drawings. And we're going to talk about the gallbladder. Because, hi, Lindy. How are you? So as people are hopping on, please share this. This is going to be a fun. It won't be uh, too long. I'm going to make it very simple and let us know what the gallbladder is and can we do keto without it. So I'm going to um, show you my little animal anatomical model here. So let me see if I can yeah, get right down here. This is the liver. So if this is my diaphragm up here are my lungs, let me see if I can back it up a little bit. Up here are my lungs. Okay. Here's my diaphragm, which separates my chest cavity from my abdominal cavity. You can see that the liver is quite large. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull this out while I'm holding it, but tucked under here and it's hard to see, but tucked up under here is the gallbladder. All right, so that's what the gallbladder, where it's located. Now I'm going to flip the phone around and show you guys. Hit the share button. Hi, everybody from Mississippi, Nancy, and, and everybody. Can I do keto without a gallbladder? And the answer is a big resounding, yes, you can, because you've been eating food since your gallbladder surgery. I mean, that's, that's pretty funny. Now that, oh, sorry about my hand. That's pretty funny. You were eating food, probably pretty fatty food, since you've had your gallbladder out, those of you like say amen, I've had my gallbladder out. So, hi, Michael Allen uh, Davis Jr., my nephew. I'm so proud of you. You've lost, what, over 100 pounds. Your wife's down over 70. Our family's down over 900, you guys. So, um, hi, everybody. So, now let's get back to my thing. So, can you do keto without a gallbladder? I want you to think of keto as not some weird alien diet. It's eating real food. It's just eating real food. And, and unless you've totally been fasting since your gallbladder was out, then you've encountered, <laughs> yes, you can. So let's go back to, I'm going to show you my little PowerPoint here because I'm so proud. And I just want to show you, Google it, Google it. This is called Google. This is, <laughs> sometimes you guys, some of you guys ask me questions. I'm like, just Google it. Okay. It's, it's all good. But I'm going to show you what I, what I did. This is on a Saturday on my own time. All right. So what is it? So let's talk about it. What, cause when you say you've had your gallbladder out, what they've done is they've taken out this little small muscular sac that's tucked under your liver. The liver's up in the right upper quadrant. That's what R-U-Q means. It means in the right upper quadrant of your abdomen. And basically all the, and I don't wanna make this light in saying all it does, but its job is to store the bile, which is not produced in the gallbladder. The bile is produced in the liver, and then it drains down through these bile ducts, and then it goes into the storage tank, think of it as your gas tank, or like if you're regular bladder, it stores your urine. The urine is not produced in the bladder. The bladder just holds it for the body. So this little muscular sac is tucked under the liver and its job is to store it and then it concentrates it. And it can concentrate the bile up to five times uh, more concentrated than what the liver creates. So let's take another step and then I'm going to show you some photos and then I'll answer some questions. What is bile? It's a very complex fluid actually and it contains water. It contains electrolytes. It contains these organic molecules called bile acids, actually cholesterol. It's one of the major ways that the body gets rid of cholesterol it doesn't need is through our bile. Um, so it, cholesterol exits there, phospholipids and other waste products, including bilirubin, which is a byproduct of cellular metabolism. And it also is one of the ways that um, the body gets rid of toxic materials that we might encounter. Um, some heavy metals, if we, um, any of the things that we might eat that are contaminants in our food. Hi, Wynell. Um, it, it starts to, uh, that's one of the pathways because what bile does, it's produced in your liver and it drains um, into that uh, gallbladder and then the bile drips or it, not drips um, it gets squirted the gallbladder contracts in the presence of fat let me get to my next picture the gallbladder contracts in the presence of fat so this is a nice so you chew food goes down the esophagus okay goes sort of behind the liver goes into the stomach here all right the stomach starts to chew it up and, and ladies and gentlemen let me turn this
from it. One of the things that we can all do to better our digestion is to chew our food like 20 times, like your mom said. And your food should actually be semi-liquefied um, when you um, eat it, when you swallow it. Don't just do two or three chews and have these chunks go down, um, but try to, try to really chew your food. So the food comes down chewed, it goes into the stomach, where the stomach secretes gastric acids, and it starts to sort of churn it up a little bit, okay? And it gets into smaller particles. And then it's hard to see, but back here, there's this thing called the duodenum or the duodenum, depending on how you talk. It's the beginning of your small intestines. And the small intestines are like 20 feet, and it goes around and around. And this is where a lot of your absorption of your actual nutrients happens and the further breakdown of the food. The water absorption is mainly in our large intestines, which we have our ascending, our transverse, and our descending colon. And that's mostly where the water is absorbed. So this is where mostly our small intestines digestion occurs. And what happens is when the um, pancreas, which is sort of drawn in very uh, lightly, I'm trying to see if I can find a bit, oh, over here is a better picture on, on Google. So the pancreas is going to produce a lot of our, not only insulin, but it produces our digestive enzymes. And then what's going to happen is triggered by the stimulus that it gets from the small intestines in the in the duodenum or duodenum. It's going to the bile, which is the gallbladder, which is tucked up here under the liver. It's a muscular sac, and it's going to contract, and it's going to squirt a large amount of bile relative to how much fat. So if you've eaten fat, it's going to sense that, and it's going to cholecystokinin, which is one of the main hormones that's going to tell the body, tell the liver, uh, excuse me, the gallbladder contract, is going to squirt bile into the small intestines. That's going to allow the availability for that fat to become digested. So that's basically what it is. And I want to show you this close up because I thought this was interesting. So what you have up here in the liver, which this particular drawing does not show, but maybe this one does here. Yeah, this one, I'm going back and forth. So here's all the little ducts that drain the bile as the body is producing it. And it goes and it goes into the gallbladder. It sort of makes a sharp right here. And it goes into the gallbladder where it's concentrated and stored until it's needed. When we eat the fat and the cholecystokinin tells the body that you've eaten fat, then this gallbladder is going to contract. It's going to put a large amount of um, bile compared to what, you know, just, well, it's based on how much fat you eat. And that's why people have gallbladder attacks after they've eaten a large fatty meal a lot of times comes down through the pancreas, okay? Then all of our di other digestive amylase, lipase, all those other digestive enzymes, so the pancreas is not just about insulin, come down and they come into the duodenum or duodenum right here, okay? So this is where they come in. And so what happens the, at, is digestion occurs. And what's interesting about bile is bile doesn't just disappear, it gets reabsorbed. And oftentimes it, they say it can be used up to 20 times before it's actually damaged and excreted. So why do people have gallbladders removed um, or cholecystectomy is the actual term? It's stones typically. So gallstones will are mostly a, um, a product of cholesterol that's not um, been managed well in the body and you get this big pain, especially after a, a big fatty meal. And so what'll happen is when this contracts, when the gallbladder contracts, these stones can, um, you get pressure. And it can actually, if one gets lodged, if, if you eat a really large fatty meal and there's a stone that's actually in this duct or it can be all the way down in here, um, even into the pancreas. And a lot of people can get pancreatitis and be hospitalized if one of those uh, causes a backup in the pancreas of, of different enzymes and stuff. But anyway, so this can cause pain after a fatty meal. It doesn't mean you have to have your gallbladder removed. Back when I had mine removed about 30 years ago, it was very much more common than it is today. Um, people are trying to uh, manage it different ways, I hope. But here's where it is. It's tucked up under here. And as you can see with those stones in there, when this contracts after a fatty meal, then you can end up with a lot of pain. So if you've had your gallbladder removed, I want you to pay attention to this particularly, they're gonna come in and they're gonna clip it off here basically. All right, so this gets removed, the stones are gone, and if you, if you have other symptoms, they'll do what's called a common bile duct exploration, and they'll try to make sure you don't have a stone down here. Um, let me see if I've got a, a better picture. It's because it, it, there could be a stone down actually as it passes through the pancreas. So basically what they do is they take this off and then this is going to be like a drippy faucet. Instead of it being something that can 
contract for you when you eat a big fatty meal. It could, it's just going to be dripping into the intestines like a leaky faucet. Now, you can, let me flip this back around for a minute. So, it doesn't mean that you can't do keto. Um, I've had mine out for about 20 years, and what they say is that sometimes you develop like a little pseudo pond uh, right there at that area where the, the body acclimates and can actually um, have some extra bile just sort of sitting around. But that being said, many of us, I know I did for quite a long time, that bile just dripping in, it's a very strong concentrated uh, solution and it can give you diarrhea or irritable bowel syndrome uh, type of symptoms. So just be aware that you can do keto after you've had your gallbladder removed, but if you are new to keto and you just have your gallbladder removed, or you ha if you have the gallbladder removed while you're doing keto and you're doing high amounts of fat, it could be problematic for you. You could have some pretty interesting diarrhea where the fat, um, you're eating too much fat for the lack of reservoir to squirt out the bile. I hope that makes sense. So. You have to allow yourself to know that it takes time to acclimate to instead of having the ability to surge bile into the intestines in the presence of a high fat meal, that the dripping faucet may end, you may end up with some diarrhea from the fat just like greasing the shush, the uh, shoot <laughs> and coming on out. So diarrhea may be, a, it's an often, uh, it's a very common, I should say, side effect of a fresh cholecystectomy or gallbladder removal patient until you acclimate to that bile dripping in and you can potentially have some problems with digestion um, because the fats are not getting digested properly that that um yeah and it's just not and when it's not digested it tends to just pass on through and like a slippery if you've ever dropped oil on the kitchen floor and then you step on it it slides quickly and you can go um, places you and do splits that you never did since high school. So anyway, um, this is why some people say you can take ox bile salts. So it's actually uh, pills or capsules that have ox bile, uh, the salts of that. Um, you can consider taking some over-the-counter digestive enzymes if you're having trouble. Um, lipase, L-I-P-A-S-E, is one to look for. That helps digest your lipids. Um, but ox bile salts and lipase would be what I would say. So that's basically it for me. It was just, it's not very uh, long video. Um, this is where it's located. It's under your under your liver. So it's tucked up in the right upper quadrant of your, of course, you got to flip your image. So the right upper quadrant um, under your liver it, its basic function is to store and concentrate the bile that's produced here. So the bile's still going to be produced. You're still going to have the ability to digest fats, maybe just not as effectively as you would have with that reservoir still there. Mine's been out about, oh, I don't know. I haven't had a gallbladder in like 20 or 25 years, and I've been doing keto a little bit over two and a half. So that's it for me. I hope that makes sense. If that makes sense to you, if it's something you'd like to either save to watch again later, or you have people that have questions, they've been asking you, well, I don't, or saying, oh, I can't do keto. I've got, I don't have a gallbladder. You just sometimes have to start with lower percents of fat. So carbohydrates are a limit. So we basically, to be in a ketogenic state, which is what ketosis is, you want to have 20 grams of carbohydrates or less. It's a, it's a limit. It, you don't have to have the 20 grams, but it's a limit. And then protein is a goal. And based on what calculator you're looking at or what, you ha what your age, because the older you are, uh, typically the less well you do with retaining that protein. So you might need a little bit more. And then, so protein's a goal, depending on what goal, sometimes 70 grams of protein a day. Um, and then fat is your lever. Fat is not an absolute. I know it's low carb, high fat, but fat, um, if you listen to what Dr. Um, Eric Westman from Duke University talks about and many others, is that if you're really trying to lose body fat, adjust the amount of dietary fat you're taking in. You don't have to hit your fat goal, your fat macro every single day. All of that, about a 75 or an 80% fat uh, percentage of your calories coming from fat is a medically 
uh, a medical level of keto, of ketogenic eating used for epilepsy, used for certain cancers, um, where you really therapeutically need to have a very high ketone level and to keep your protein and other things low. But for weight loss, you, if you if you are not losing weight on this, consider as one of the levers that you can pull is to drop your fat content a little bit. See how you do with that. Maybe you're sensitive to dairy or things like that. But um, that's it for me. You guys are great. I'm so glad you, you hopped on. I hope that made some sense. Uh, can I do keto without my gallbladder? Absolutely, yes. You may have to not have a lot of fat at one sitting. You may not do well with a fatty coffee. Um, AKA bulletproof coffee in the morning. And you, and that's, you know, that's not a bad thing because if you're trying to get the fat off of your hips, it keeps you, uh, if you have a sensitive gut to fat, then it will keep you from putting so much fat on your plate. So that's it for me. I hope you, I, you guys have a really great day and I will talk to you soon. See ya. Bye.